The Sheikh Rahimullah, he said, مُعَاجِلُ الْمَحْذُورِ قَبْلَ آنِهِ قَدْ بَاءَ بِالْخُسْرَانِ مَعْ حِرْمَانِهِ مُعَاجِلُ الْمَحْذُورِ قَبْلَ آنِهِ The Sheikh Rahimullah, he's talking about مَنْ إِسْتَعْجَلَ Anybody who hastens بِطَرِيقٍ مُحَرَّمٍ In a prohibited manner, he hastens something in a prohibited manner. What will happen? سيحصل له في الزمان الثاني فإنه يلحق الإثم من جهة الأحكام الآخرة ويمنع ويحرم مما استعجل به في الدنيا. He will gain a sin for it the day of judgment when he meets Allah تبارك وتعالى. And what will also happen to him is that same thing. He will be prohibited in it. He will be prohibited from it in this world. For example. A person kills um, the person they're going to inherit. They kill them. So they can hasten their life, take it, uh, their death, sorry, they can hasten their death, so they can take their life because they want to inherit them quickly. The Prophet said, The one who killed will not inherit. So it's your dad, you were going to inherit from him, you've hastened his death. What will be said to you is, من استعجل شيئا قبل أوانه عقب بحرمانه. anyone who hastens something before its time, he will be punished by him by being prohibited from it. and this is a قاعدة which the الصحابة رضوان الله عليهم مجمعين they unanimously agreed on. and they all agreed on that if a man divorces his wife in her deathbed. And on his deathbed, he's about to die, he's about to leave this world, he's about to departure, and he realized that he's going to die. And he doesn't want his wife to inherit him. He doesn't want his wife to inherit him. So he deliberately divorces her so she can't inherit him on his deathbed. The scholars, Sahabas, Ridwanullah, Ali Majma'in, bil ijma' by consent, what did they say? La yultafatu ila dhalik. His divorce will not be looked into. Ah, bel tarithu, she's going to inherit him. ولو كانت المرأة قد طلقت even if he divorced her even if she's been divorced she will inherit him also the same one is the khamar alcohol anybody who drinks alcohol in this world who takes it in this world he won't drink it in the hereafter because what has he done he has hastened it in this dunya before the hereafter if he doesn't repent from it he will not drink it in the hereafter نعم also, the person who wears silk in this dunya, the male who wears silk in this dunya, what has the Prophet ﷺ said? That he will not receive it in the hereafter. So all of them are suwar, they are furu', they are sub-branches that all fall under this qa'idah, which is man isti'ajala shay'an qabla awanihi uqiba bilhirmanihi. The author then said, rahimahullah, after that, وَإِنْ أَتَتْ تَحْرِيمُ فِي نَفْسِ الْعَمَلِ أَوْ شَرْطِهِ فَذُو فَسَادٍ وَخَلَلٍ The author says, رحمه الله, if there comes a prohibition, in the particular action that you're doing, a prohibition comes regarding it, or a prohibition comes in its condition, then that thing is fasad, it is void, it is nullified. نعم. That is what the author, Rahimahullah, he is talking about. So, إِذَا وَرَدَ نَصٌ مِّنَ الشَّارِعِ If there comes a text from the Sharia, the legislator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us something, that this thing is prohibited, this action is prohibited. Doing it is void. Um, or even if there is in the condition there is a prohibition in the condition of that action, then it's void as well. And the evidence for that is um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that the Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Shaykhan, they narrated that the Prophet said, anna uh, that the Prophet said, sorry, man amila amala laysa alayhi amruna fahuwarad. Anyone who does an action that is not from our affairs is rejected. The Prophet prohibited anybody to introduce anything to the religion. So to do that action is void. And nahyu yaqtadil fasad. 
And that hadith is a hadith the scholars use for that qa'idah. Naam. Also, the man cannot marry a woman who is in her idda. A woman who is not finished her period uh, of the thalatha taquru, the three cycles she hasn't finished. A man goes and he gets married to her and he's prohibited from marry her, marrying her. This nikah is, is nikah which is fasid, batil, baseless. Because why? لِأَنَّهُ مَنْ هِيُّ عَنِّكَ حِيَا Because he's prohibited from marrying her. So, وَإِنْ أَتَتْ تَحْرِيمُ فِي نَفْسِ الْعَمَلِ In this action of marrying a woman, while she's in that period of time, is prohibited. So if you do marry her, and you go against that prohibition, then your marriage with that woman is فَاسِدُ الْاعْتِبَارِ It's given no consideration. Does the word fasid and batil both mean the same? Are they both the same meaning? The Jumhur, they don't differ between it. The Jumhur of the ulama, the majority of the scholars, fasid and batil both mean the same. Like in the Hanafiyyah, the Ahnaf, they distinguish between fasid and they also distinguish uh, fasid from batil. They say that fasid is ma anhu li wasfihi. Anything that is prohibited because of its description. And they say batil is what? ma anhu li aslihi. They say the batil is something that is prohibited because of its essence. The Hanabila, they also distinguish between it. And they say that the fasid is ma lam yanfa'. That the fasid is that which doesn't benefit. Sorry, sorry. They say ma lam yaqa' ijma'un ala tahribi wa fasadi. They said the fasid is something there is no unanimous agreement on it in regards to its being it being prohibited. There's no unanimous agreement. There's a khilaf. Some are saying it's permissible. Some are saying it's not permissible. This is called fasid. But if there comes an ijma' ma waqa' ijma' ala tahrimi is fasid. If there comes a, a, sorry, batil. If there comes a ijma' then this is called a batil. So based on that they uh, say for example the nikah al-mut'ah nikah uh, al-mut'ah is what? is contract marriage. They say this is batil. Why? Because there's an ijma' regarding it, according to the Han Han Hanabila. But nikah bila wali, the marrying of the woman without the condition, without the wali, the guardian, they say this is called fasid. It is called fasid because adam ittifaq ali because there's no unanimous agreement. There are some who differ on this issue. Like in this differing goes against the hadith of the Prophet. The Prophet said, what did he say? أَيُّمَا إِمْرَأَةٍ نَكَحَتْ Any woman who gets married بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِ وَلِيِّهَا Without the permission of her wali is what? فَالنِّكَحُهَا بَاطِل The Prophet said باطل عليه الصلاة والسلام And the khilaf in this issue is فاسد الاعتبار The khilaf that has been bought is called فاسد, فاسد الاعتبار And inshallah ta'ala is one of the things I have in my mind to do this issue of نِكَاحُ المرأة بِغَيْرِ وَلِي بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِ وَلِيهَا Marrying a woman without the permission of her wali, it's a muhadara, uh, which I hope to do, inshallah ta'ala, in the upcoming future, the soon, uh, close future, inshallah ta'ala. وَإِنْ أَتَتْ تَحْرِيمُ فِي نَفْسِ العمل أو شرطه فذو فساد وخلل. So we understood that if the prohibition, it comes what? If the prohibition, it occurs in the action itself, then it's fasid, it is batil. If it comes in its condition, it's also fasid and it's batil. Now I want you all to take this inshallah ta'ala with you that the prohibition occurs in three ways. The prohibition falls in three different ways. The first one is عنه, that which has been prohibited. Min al actions, a action has been prohibited. Why? Lidati in itself. In and within itself is being prohibited. This one. فَهَذَا فَعْلٌ فَاسِدٌ لَا تَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ آثَارُهُ بِالِاتِفَاقِ This one is void and nothing will be taken out of it by way of consent. Such as zina, the prohibition of zina. Um, anything that comes after zina, the sharia won't take into consideration. لَا تَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ آثَارُهُ الْوَطْءُ الصَّحِيحِ Through zina you can't say I'm married to a woman. لَا أَبَدًا لَا يَتْ 
this is haram in and within itself. Naam. So, what does that mean? Nothing comes out of it. What do we mean? Nothing comes out of it. We mean the children that you give birth to is, are not yours. Those children are, are not yours. So if the woman becomes pregnant, we'll say this is prohibited. Then any nothing is taken into consideration. Any children that come, they can't take your name. They take the name of the mother. La yajuz. It's not permissible for the man if he has a child through zina to name that child after himself. Number two. Um, the second type of prohibition is إِذَا نُهِيَ عَنِ الْفِعْلِ لِوَصْفٍ فِيهِ A description lies in this thing. The prohibition here is not the action in and within itself, but it's a description that's present in the action, or a condition that is present in the action. فَهَذَا يَدُّلُ عَلَى فَسَادِ أَيْضًا وَبُطْلَانُ عَلَى الصَّحِحِ This one, the Sheikh indicated that, that this one is, a, is prohibited. And, not, and it, the, what comes out of it is not taken into consideration as well. And the prohibition is anyone who prays a voluntary prayer at the time when the prayers are prohibited. Nahi. The Prophet said, La tusallu ba'da al-asri. Don't pray after asr. La salata ba'da salat al-asr. There is no prayer after salat al-asr. Wa la salata ba'da al-fajri. And there's no salah after fajr. The Prophet said all of this. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So, the person is being prohibited about a particular description. So this one, the person praying, it's not taken into consideration. It is not what? It is not taken into consideration. <coughs> Good. The third one is, The third one is what? The prohibition occurs in the, in the description without the mentioning of the action. The action is not mentioned. The action is not mentioned. This is the, this is the trickiest one now. The Sharia prohibited a form, of a form of description. It prohibited this. But it didn't mention a action. Pay attention. For example, wearing the silk for the men is prohibited. If a person goes and he prays salah with a silk, is his salah correct or not? The jumhur of the ulama, the majority of the scholars, they take the view which is what? Tasihu salat. The salah is accepted from him, so it is taken into consideration. But the sinning is on his shoulders. The hanabila. They said, لا تصح صلاته. His salah is not accepted. Why? How can he try to get closer? كيف يتقرب إلى الله? How can he even think of wanting to get closer to Allah? By a prohibited action. How can he? بفعل منهي عنه. An action in which he is prohibited from. How can he try to get closer to Allah? Through it. وكيف يكون الفعل الواحد معصية ويكون أيضا طاعة? And they said, what also can't be accepted is, how can one action be a sin and also be an obedience? So he's sinning by doing this. But he's also what? But he's also, he's doing also an obedience by praying because Allah has accepted it. So he's disobeying Allah wa ta'ala in what? In committing this sin? In standing in front of Allah Tabarak wa Taala, in what? Uh, in salah with something which he stole or, or wearing clothes that is made out of silk, naam, and thus, but then it's accepted from him, it's an, and, and that is a, it's an obedience. <coughs> and they stood stood by the hadith that we mentioned previously, man amila amala leis alihi amruna, fahuwa rad. That's what they said. A lot of picked forms come into this. A person who prays in a salah, he prays a, he prays a salah in a house that is robbed. Somebody took a house forcefully. And somebody goes and he prays inside it. The salah is sahih according to the jumhur of the ulama. But the sin of robbing and stealing this thing is a sin that's on his shoulder. Um, and the khilaf stands like that. So based upon that, 
the scholars they take those different forms and it, uh, understanding from that line of poetry where in atat tahrimu fi nafsi al-amal aw sharti fadhu fasad wa khalal we elaborate more that more uh, more in this issue inshallah ta'ala in our faraid al-bahiyya then the shaykh goes wa mutlif wa mutlaf wa mutlif mu'dihi laysa yadhmanu ba'da ad-difa' bi allati hi ahsanu the shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala here he's talking about a qa'id which is very important which is it's known as daf'u as-sa'il a person comes to attack you and basically self-defense somebody comes and he wants to do something to you it is permissible for you to defend yourself you're allowed to لكن بشرط the condition is بأقل فالأقل you're, own, you're allowed to use the minimum that is needed if he comes into the house and he's got a stick uh, he's got a stick uh, and then you go into your room and you bring a, uh, 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 what's it called, a hand, you know, launcher. And you blow his whole head off. La. That is not correct. Or he's got a what? He's got nothing with him. He came into your house. He just wants to rob. He wants to take something. He came into the house. And he's got nothing with him. And if you just switch the light on him and you shout, he'll jump out the window and run away. You're not allowed to do anything to what? You can't, you can't harm him. But if he comes into the house and he's got a gun, and he's come into the house, and he's come into the house to take, to rob, to harm, he's come for that reason, the Sharia, if you take his life and he dies, you're not, the, the, the matter is not placed on your shoulder. His death, nobody can ask you for it. You're not going to pay a dia, you're not going to pay anything. That is with the condition that you're only pushing him to do what was needed. <coughs> if you take his life, there's no evidence. Why? Allah said in the Quran. Allah wa ta'ala, he said, there are a lot ayats that back this issue up. But Allah said, إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَظْلِمُونَ النَّاسَ وَيَبَغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ The path and the issue is on the people who are out. The issue is placed on the people who are out there who are oppressing the, uh, the Muslims or the individual, the issue is on them. Not the, the person who defends himself. Uh, the one who defends himself, he's not anything, there's nothing on him. The, issue, the, the one who's harmed is going to be harmed, and the issue is on is the one who killed. Naam. <coughs> For example, somebody comes to your house and he looks into your door, he peeps in, he moves the curtain and he tries to peep in. And you see him, and you take a stick and you put it in his eye, and his eye goes. In the Sharia, you don't pay him back anything. Nothing's on you. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man fi baytin, anyone who looks into a house. Qawmin, a house of a people. Bighayri idnihim, without their permission. And what do they do? Fafqa and uh, عينه, and they take his eye out. There's nothing they're going to give him, not a penny. And you're going to walk around with one eye. It's your, your problem. You did it to yourself. Uh, so this evidence here is like uh, after defending yourself, the Shaykh condition that it has to be in good. A, a person's camel. A person's camel, it came running at you. You took a gun out, you shot it. Or you killed it. Because it was, it, was ta- it was attacking you. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, and etc. Those people who own the animal, they will, you're not going to have to give them back the camel. And it falls under the qa'idah that we previously mentioned. La darara wa la dirar. It also falls under that. It falls under? La darara wa la dirar. Very good. The Sheikh now, inshallah, rahimahullah, he's going to go into what we, what we know as Dalalatu uh, Al-Fadh. When let us show umum, generalization and whatnot. He said, Wal-al tufidu al-kul fi al-umum. The word al tufidu al-kul. The word al, it shows generalization. The al, that the Sheikh, rahimahullah, so these are al-fadh, they are words that you need to know. When you read the Quran, you will know what is general, what is specific. And then the meaning becomes different for you. The Shaykh here he said, Wal al, 
The al which he's referring to is the al al jinsiyah al dakhila to al al asma. It is the the al which enter the noun, or it's also known as what, according to some of the grammarians, la mutarif. Ha. Some of the grammarians they discuss each other. Which is the muarraf? Is it the alif? Is it the lam? Is it the lam by itself? Some grammarians they say the alif is alif al wasl. It's not even the, the lam is what is. The lamb is what is mu'arraf. Ala kulli hal, um, we spoke about that in a jurumiyah. So should we call it al, or should we call it alif al-lam? Naam. So, pay attention. The al that enters a noun are three types. Asl, you need to remember this. The al that enters a noun are three types. The first one is al al-za'ida. Al-za'ida. It's the one that enters, like, for example, al-harith, al-abbas. Abbas is already mu'arraf. He's already known who he is. When you've put the alif al lam in it, you haven't made him even more known. So they, they call this za'ida. Why do they call it za'ida? Pay attention, this word you have to know what za'ida means. Za'ida means it's just an additional, with it or without it, the meaning doesn't change. That's what za'ida means. And that is why when you're doing tafsir of the Quran and you come to words and letters, you should never use the word za'ida. It is su'ul adab al Quran. When you say this is a za'ida, za'ida, so many grammarians use that. It means that if you take this from the Quran, the Quran, the ayahs, the siyakh, and everything won't change. And that isn't the case. Every letter, every kalima, every harf in the Quran, you can't take it out. It's muta'abbadun bitilawati. You worship Allah by every letter. Every letter has a purpose why it's there. It has a what? It has a purpose why it's there. So, we don't believe the Quran has za'idah. Also, some people say, when they come to, you know, duriba. Ya yuladina amanu duriba mathalu fastami'u lah. Duriba. Duriba in grammar, grammar, what would we say? Mabniyu lil machul. Or we call it al maf'ul ladi lam yusamma fa'ilu. Dhumma awaluhu wa kusira ma qabla akhiri. That's if it's thulati. How can you say mabniyu lil machul for the Quran? Use words like that. Wa khuliqa al insanu da'ifa. Mabniyu lil machul. The person who created it, we don't know. Can you say that? La. So you say al maf'ul ladi lam yusamma fa'ilu. That's the usage you say. So it's important that you, the next type of alif alam is the first one zaida. The second type of alif alam is known as what? The second type of alif alam is called al ahdiya. Al ahdiya. Al ahdiya is if you and I were both talking about something, and then I say to Akhi, al bait. This bait is known to you and me because we were talking about it all the time. So I say to you, the house is called Ahdiya because it is something I'm bringing you back to. It's the one we were talking about. The house is called Ahdiya. The Alif Al-Lam is called Ahdiya. It is the one Allah used in Surah Surah Al-Muzammil. Inna arsalna ilaykum rasoolan shahidan alaykum kama arsalna ila fir'awna rasoola. So the first rasoolan, the first rasoolan was what? It was Al-Mu'arraf. It was Nakirah. It's indefinite. Two things shows it's def- indefinite. First of all, there's no alif alam in it, and there's a tanween of tankir in there. Ah, there's a tanween of indefinite in there. Because Allah said, Inna rasulan shahidan alaykum kama arsalna ila fir'awna rasulan. Look what I said, Allah said after that. Fa'asa fir'awnu ar-rasula. The second ar-rasula is ahdiya. Why is it ahdiya? It is the one that was just being spoken about. We should know it by now. So it's ahdiya, it's, it's, it's there, it's in our minds. Uh, it is what? In our minds. <coughs> also, Allah Ta'ala, He used it in many mawat of the Quran. For example, Allah says, Allah nuru samawati wal ard, matalu nurihi ka mishkatin, fiha misbah. Al misbah. Fi misbah. Allah says, fiha misbah. Fiha misbah. Al misbah. This is ahdiya. Why? Because that was, the misbah that was being spoken about, uh, the al misbah is that one. It's called ahdiya. Ahdiyah, the condition for it is that same word has been previously speak, was spoken about in order to call it Ahdiyah. Does it make sense? It's called Ahdiyah. Naam, azzujajatu ka'annaha kawkabun durriyun. For example, Allah wa ta'ala, He says uh, in the Quran, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today I have finished your religion for you. This Al-yawma is Ahdiyah. Ha? Huh? We know it. It's well known to us. It's the day of Arafah. Ha? Huh? Day of Arafah. The Prophet Sallallahu stood up. And what did he say? Uh, a day before Friday. 
Uh, on a Friday, sorry. It was on a Friday. It was on a Friday. We know it. Al yawma, the day, that day, Al yawma arafa, that the Prophet was standing, Hajjatul Wada'a. We know it. Al Adiyah is in our mind because the Hadith tells us about it. Are you with me? So Adiyah means what? Adiyah means Yuradu bihi irja'u al kalami ila ma'hudin musahibin sabiqin. That's what it means. The third type is called Al Jinsiya. Al Jinsiya. Um, al jinsiya it is the one that is intended for it a jins a you want that thing to encompass it the meaning to come into it that that particular thing and the jinsiya is of three types the jinsiya is how many types three types the first one is al dakhila to al jama that which enters plural for example you say al mu'minuna al muslimuna al rijalu the third second type is called of the jinsiya is those who enter Particular ajnas, particular things. And they are like al ma the water. al bayu the transaction. When I say to al bayu you know that it's all form of bayah. The third one is, from the jinsiya is, al-dakhilatu ala al-asma' al-mufrada. Pay attention. The reason why I'm telling you this, because we're going to learn which one comes as a umum. The third one is, from the jinsiya that which enters Singular words. It enters a singular noun. Such as Al Insan. Insan is what? Insan is what? Insan is what? Al Dahila to Al Asma al Mufrad the Mithla uh Mithil al Insani was Sariku sorry, like the word it enters humans. Mufrad, like as Sariku the one who stole one. Was Sarika to the female who stole one female. Fakta'u kat. The one that enters azaniyatu, wazani, fajlidu, whip them, ah, uh, whip them. This one, it entered what? It entered the ism which is mufrad, which is what? Which is jinsiyah. So it's mufrad, and it's in the jins, right? Naam. This one fatufidu al-umumi ala sahih. It shows generalization according to strongest view. Where's the evidence that that shows umum? The evidence is Wal-Asri. Wal-Asr. Inna al-insana. Insan, is it one or is it plural? Yeah? It's Mufrad. What's the Jama'ah? Al-Nas. Nas is plural. Are you with me? Insan is one person. Inna al-insana. Verily, the people are upon what? Why do we say people? It's just one. Why? إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا To show you that this Al-Insan is, uh, is Jama' and it shows generalization is why did Allah bring an istithna exception after it? There were, the exception only occurs to bring some out of it so they don't fall under that generalization exception. Don't add this to the list. That's why Allah said إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَةِ So then the Al here right now is what? Insan it's Amun, it's a Mufrad, it's a Mu'arraf, and it's al al -jinsiyya. Very good. This all show what? That shows generalization. Also what shows its generalization is what? Allah says, Tifl. Tifl is Mufrad. It's a Jins. It's a Ismun. It's a is, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Lafzari. Mufrad. مُعَرَّفْ بِأَلْ الْجِنْسِيَّةِ فَيُفِيدُ مَاذَا؟ فَيُفِيدُ الْعُمُومِ It shows generalization. Every child, any child who doesn't know the women's awrat, he can come in, not a problem. Women don't have to wear hijab in front of children, little kids. Where's the evidence? So somebody can say, no, it's not all children. There's an exception. The usage of the word الَّذِينَ shows it. Because Al-Ladina is min adawatul is mawsula and it shows generalization and it's agreed upon. There's no khilaf on that. Da'am. Ala kulli hal. Also, another example on it, on it buying and selling. You guys have to learn these words because it benefits you a lot. Allah says in the Quran, what buying and selling is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, wa ahalla Allahu al bay'a wa harram al riba. Allah made bay'a permissible and He prohibited what? Al-Riba. Al-Riba, Allah prohibited it. 
Pay attention to this. Then the ribay, the transaction, the asal for it is what? Al-hillu. How? Because al-bay'u, brother, is a, again, lafzun, mufradun, mu'arrafun bil al al jismiyat fayadullu ala al-umum. It changes generalization. Where is that exception that you say this type of transaction is not allowed? Where's your evidence for this? You see, it, it allows you to be able to. So the Shaykh here, he mentions that first time. Well, Al Tufidu Al Kullu Fil Ububi Fil Jam'i, I brought it for you guys. Well, Ifradi, and when it's singular. Kal Alimi, like Alim, like Alim as an example. <coughs> Very good. Well, Nakiratu. في سياق النفي تعطي تعطى العبوبة أو السياق النهي. The Sheikh رحمه الله is talking about what the indefinite. The if you have pay attention, this is important again. He's still talking about what الفاظ العموم. The لالات الألفاظ very important. The لالات الألفاظ are very very important for the طالب العلم to learn them very well. أخي this is عام. أخي this is خاص. أخي this is مطلق. Okay, this is muqayyad. Then you know where to stand. Your issue. You got an exception. Bring this text out of here. But you're not going to take a general text when they are, there's a am you're, you're holding on to. And there's suwar which mukhassas that the sharia has taken out of it. I mean, there's istithna'at. And you're still sticking to the generalization. How does that work? So you have to learn this. Wa to the indefinite. Fi siyaq in nafi in the context of negation. Write this down. It's important. Negation, uh, there's an indefinite, an indefinite, and it's in what context? That indefinite, it's the, in the context of a negation. Ah, uh, examples will be given, inshallah ta'ala. What does it show? It shows generalization. For example, Allah ta'ala said in the Quran, This is an indefinite, it's an indefinite, and it's in a context of negation. For example, Allah ta'ala He said, Wama qadarullah. Where's the indefinite? Wama. That's nafi. Straight away, look at this. It's, this is the context now. The context started straight away with what? Negation. A negation. Straight away. The minute you find a indefinite in that context, what are you going to call it? Generalization. So Allah says, وَمَا Allah did not قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They did not. So Allah is negating it from the disbelievers. That they have not honored Allah the way He deserves to be honored. إِذْ قَالُوا When they said, ما أنزل الله الله did not send down على بشر من شيء anything this anything is it some they're referring to or are they referring to anything whatsoever it's it's is شيء in a نكرة how do you know it's a نكرة look at that تنوين that's there the تنوين there's no ألف لام in the word and that tanween, we took it when we studied tanween al iwad, tanween al muqabala, tanween al tankir, tanween al tamkeen. We took those four. There are ten we said, but these four are the most common ones. This is that's what you see. Min shayin. Automatically, ma anzal Allah, Allah has not sent down. Min shayin. Nakiratun fi siyaqi nafi. Fatufid al umuma. You say. See how you learnt it there? This is an ala, it's, a, it's an instrument that a person really needs to study and learn. Naam. So, Allah refuted them subhanahu wa ta'ala by that statement of theirs. What did he say? Qul man anzal al-kitab alladhi ja'a bihi Musa. Who is the one who sent down? This gen, this sweeping argument that they gave, that they generalized it. What did Allah reply to them by saying? Allah said to them, who is the one who sent down Musa with the book he brought? Who? Allah tabarakat ta'ala. 